Congratulations. How does it feel, first of all, to win? It's a hard-hitting question. I like to get the tough ones in first. How does it feel? Oh, it's extraordinary. I mean, we're, we're really here on behalf of Ava DuVernay, our fearless leader and director. She's, a, she's in New Zealand shooting her new film, so unfortunately can't be here, but I know she's absolutely heartbroken. This is such an important moment and award for her, so thank you. We're just over the moon. And, uh, and Howard? Well, I echo Lisa's comments and <laughs> humbled and excited. Thank you. Uh, this is a very, very important movie, but a very important subject, uh, mm -hmm. uh, racial inequality and the justice system in the States. Mm -hmm. How did it come about? Did it originate with Ava DuVernay? Correct. So um, I uh, oversee the original documentary programming at Netflix, um, and I've been a longtime fan of Ava's work. And she's one of these really rare directors that can work across formats. So she's worked in television and doc and scripted, and I've always wanted to work with her. So I called her, and I asked her, um, this is while she was working on Selma. I said, is there anything that you are burning to make a documentary about? Because her first two films were documentaries. Um, and she said, let me think on that. And she called me back. And she said, this is an area that has always, always been of incredible importance. Um, she grew up in Compton, California. Mm -hmm. uh, she has told this story before that she grew up in a world where there was a really heavy police presence. Um, and we talked a lot about that, because when I grew up, I was taught, if you're in trouble, go to the police, they'll help you. And where she grew up, she feared the police. When they showed up, it meant that something uh, was awry. Yes. And so how is it that we grew up in such different ways, uh, not that far from each other? Yes. So um, it's really the exploration of that. And I think the thing that she did was she wanted to take a 30,000 foot look from the time of the abolishment of slavery in 1865 to today uh -huh. to better understand how is it that we're such a divided nation. How quickly did she call you back? <laughs> she actually calls back quite quickly. Okay. I was surprised, <laughs> very surprised, yeah. Um, what, what, can you talk about the impact that the documentary has had? Has, mm -hmm. it, has it changed anything? Has it uh, in, in, well, wake, I, I'll, woken I'll people to head this? head off and then you can add. Um, so the beauty of it is that when we released the film, uh, on Netflix, we were able to do it on 190 countries simultaneously. So what we've been so surprised in is what we thought was going to be intrinsically an American story is actually being very, very much engaged with around the world. So all the countries around the world are actually watching the film. It's perpetually available. And so the conversation very quickly moved to social media, obviously, with the election. I mean, I'll tell you that during the course of the production of the film, we closed the film, we finished the film, and then events continued to happen. Philando Castillo was killed at the hand of a police officer. Donald Trump gave a, a speech uh, at the RNC that was extraordinarily familiar um, and harkened days of Nixon and Reagan. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just too, too important. So we continued to open the film again and again and again to add to try to be as complete as possible. So um, it really is reflecting real time events and yes. the fact that history does repeat itself. Uh, sorry, Howard. Yes. I think in addition, what Lisa, you, you also forgot to say is you've got to translate it into 24 different languages around the country. <laughs> so it really can reach a global audience. What, what I find amazing, and it's been months since the film was uh, released, is that every day I get a minimum of a dozen calls at my office. I'm sure Netflix, Netflix gets 10 times as many in Ava's office from college kids, from organizations, from universities around the country, all wanting to screen the movie and talk about it. And I think that's going to create social change. Fantastic. Uh, any questions? Yes, please, over here. Thank you. Hi, I'm Phil. I'm with the in-house BAFTA crew. Did you see evidence when compiling this documentary of race relations in America going backwards, not forwards? That's a great question. I think the thing that you start to realize when you take a real um, rigorous look is it's that it's never really changed, right? You see it repeating. So we look at what was happening in the days of Nixon when you talk about law and order. It sounds like protection, but what does it really mean? What does it mean when you employ three strikes and, and, and you're out law? What does that mean when you start to develop prisons for profit that need to be at full capacity? It might drive you to make different types of decisions. And so more so than anything, it was allowing us to really take a look at the landscape and understand um, that these are cycles that continue and are very, very durable. Um, and the hope is that um, by watching the film, it's a great primer, and that what it does is it, is it tunes your ear to understand that when you hear somebody say, I'm the law and order president, what that exactly might mean. 
Uh, and on that note, that's all the time we have, I'm afraid. But thank you once again. Please give it up for the winners of Best Documentary for 13th, Lisa Nisamura and Howard Barish. Thank you, thank you very much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Yeah.